This video of mine is about cellulitis which is a common, potentially serious bacterial skin infection. The affected skin appears swollen and red and is typically painful and warm to the touch. Earlier I posted a short video about cellulitis on this channel. I hope you have already seen that video and today I am going to discuss this illness in detail. Well, cellulitis usually affects the uh, skin on the lower legs but it can occur in the face, arms and other areas of the body. It occurs when a crack or break in your skin allows bacteria to enter. Left untreated, the infection can spread to your lymph nodes and bloodstream and rapidly becomes life-threatening. Cellulitis usually does not spread from one person to another. And now I will tell you the symptoms. Possible signs and symptoms of cellulitis which usually occur on one side of the body include red area of the skin that tends to expand, swelling, tenderness, pain, warmth, fever, red spots, blisters, skin dimpling. It is important to identify and treat cellulitis early because the infection can spread rapidly throughout your body. You should seek emergency care if you have a red swollen tender rash or a rash that is changing rapidly and if you have a fever. You should see your doctor prefer preferably that day if you have a rash that is red, swollen, tender and warm and it is exp expanding but without fever. Now I will tell you the causes of cellulitis. Well, cellulitis occurs when bacteria most commonly streptococcus and staphylococcus enter through a crack or break in your skin. The incidence of a more serious staphylococcal, staphylococcal infection called methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus that is MRSA is increasing. Although cellulitis can occur anywhere on your body, the most common location is the lower leg. Bacteria are most likely to enter disrupted areas of the skin such as where you have had recent surgery, cuts, puncture, wounds, an ulcer, athlete's foot or dermatitis. Well, on this channel I have already posted a video about athlete's foot. If you haven't seen that video already, you can see that video that is very informative video. Also animal bites can cause cellulitis. Bacteria can also enter through areas of dry, flaky skin or swollen skin. Now I will tell you the risk factors. There are several factors that put you at increased risk of cellulitis. These are injury. Any cut, fracture, burn or scrape gives bacteria an entry point. Weakened immune system. Condition that weaken your immune system such as diabetes, leukemia and HIV AIDS leave you more susceptible to infections. Certain medications also can weaken your immune system. Skin condition. Conditions such as eczema, athlete's foot and shingles can cause breaks in the skin which give bacteria an entry point. Uh, other risk factors are chronic swelling of your arm or leg that is known as lymphedema. This condition sometimes follows surgery. If you have a history of cellulitis, having had cellulitis before makes you prone to develop it again. Obesity. Being overweight or obese increases your risk of developing cellulitis. Now I will tell you the complications. Recurrent episodes of cellulitis may damage the lymphatic drainage system and cause chronic swelling of the affected limb. Rarely, the infection can spread to the deep layer of tissue called the facial lining. Necrotizing fasciitis is an example of a deep layer skin infection. Deep layer infection. It is an extreme emergency. Now, I will tell you the prevention. If your cellulitis reoccurs, your doctor may recommend preventive antibiotics to help prevent cellulitis and other infections. Take these precautions when you have a skin wound. You should wash your hand daily with soap and water. Do this gently as part of your normal bathing. Apply a protective cream or ointment for most surface wounds and over-the-counter ointment such as Vaseline, Polysporin and some other creams provide adequate protection. You should cover your wound with a bandage. Change bandages at least daily. Watch for signs of infection. Redness, pain and drainage all signal possible infection and the need for medical evaluation. People with diabetes and those with poor circulation need to take extra precautions to prevent skin injury. Good skin care measures include inspect your feet daily, regularly check your feet for signs of injury so you can uh, catch infections early. Also, you should moisturize your skin regularly. Lubricating your skin helps prevent cracking and peeling. Do not apply moisturizer to open sores. 
You should trim your fingernails and toenails carefully. Take care not to injure the surrounding skin. Protect your hands and feet. Wear appropriate footwear and gloves. Promptly treat infections on the skin surface, uh, superficial skin infections such as athlete's foot. Superficial skin infections can easily spread from person to person, so do not wait to start treatment. Now I will tell you about the diagnosis of cellulitis. Uh, your doctor will likely be able to diagnose cellulitis by looking at your skin. In some cases, he or she may suggest blood tests or other tests to help rule out other conditions. Now coming to the treatment, cellulitis treatment usually includes a prescription oral antibiotic. Within three days of the starting an antibiotic, let your doctor know whether the infection is responding to treatment or not. You will need to take the antibiotic for as long as your doctor directs, usually five to ten days but possibly as long as 14 days. But regarding the uh, choice of antibiotics, you can see um, uh, the names of medication written on the uh, image. Yeah, okay. I usually post images, uh, you know, when I talk, so you can get the help of images. So my videos are not important just for from the listening point of view. You should see all those images which I post, which are very helpful. Okay. Well, in most cases, signs and symptoms of cellulitis disappear after a few days. You may need to be hospitalized and receive antibiotics through your veins, that is intravenous treatment. Okay, uh, intravenous treatment is required when signs and symptoms do not respond to oral antibiotics. Uh, sign that our signs and symptoms are extensive or if you have a high fever. Usually, doctor prescribe the drug that is effective against both streptococcus and staphylococcus. It is important that you take the medication as directed and finish the entire course of medication even after you feel better. Your doctor also might recommend elevating the affected area which may speed recovery. Now I'll tell you some lifestyle and home remedies briefly. You should try the steps which I'm going to tell you to help ease any pain and swelling. You should place a cool damp cloth on the affected area as often as needed for your comfort. You should ask your doctor to suggest an over-the-counter pain medication to treat pain. Elevate the affected part of your body. Ask your doctor whether it might help to wear compression wraps or stocking. Well, this was a video about cellulitis. If you have any question, questions about cellulitis, you can post your question in the comment section. Uh, and if you uh, find uh, if you have any other illness uh, there uh, you can uh, ask about uh, question about that illness on my channel uh, I have posted so many videos about different illnesses and if you have any particular illness for which you do not find any video about that particular illness you can post your comment and if I find a time I'll try to uh, post a video about that particular illness thank you so much for watching this video see you in next video bye for now